Hey guys, it's Mr. Sarley. Welcome to our last uh, week of YouTube homework to get ready for the state test. I am about to make 10 videos in a row, um, so I'm sorry I don't have songs or anything for you. I'm just trying to do everything I can so you um, feel like you're ready for the test next week. So here's an answer key. And if any part of integers was hard for you, please stick around for the whole video and review for the state test. For this very first problem, we have 4 plus negative 6. The main way we thought about this problem was with the flying balloon house from up. The 4 was like our starting point, and the house starts 4 feet above sea level. So we can kind of picture it floating up over here. And then we're adding. Adding normally means we're going up, but notice that we're adding a negative. Since we're adding negative 6, we say adds or add 6 weights. And then you should probably end this up with where is the house now? So when we add weight to the balloon house, it's going to make the house heavier, and that's going to pull the house down. So basically, it's going to go down 6. On an open number line, we're going to go down, but first we're going to hit that landmark 0, and then we'll have two more to go down. And so that's why the answer here is negative 2. For the second problem, we have negative 3 plus 9. Um, since this one involves just adding a positive number, it, personally, I like to think about it as an elevator problem. So again, the first number is the starting point. So I'm going to say an elevator starts three floors in the basement. And then I'm going to model that on an open number line. So if we have zero, like the lobby right there, this elevator is starting down here. Then we're adding a positive 9, which means the elevator goes up 9 floors. Where is it now? To model that, I know that as I go up, I'm going to hit zero. And that's just going to be like negative 3 plus 3. But then I'm breaking up this 9. I've already done 3. I have 6 left to go up. So I'm going to go up 6 more. And that's why the answer here is positive 6. All right, the next problem says 8 minus negative 2. Um, since the second number is negative, this is a weight problem. So imagine that the flying balloon house starts 8 feet above sea level. And on the open number line, that would look like this, with sea level being somewhere down here. So then, we're subtracting. Subtraction normally means that we're going down, but we're subtracting a negative amount. So it helps to think of the flying house. We're removing 2 pounds of weights. So just picture that balloon house and what, what's going to happen when you throw out, like, the refrigerator. The house isn't as heavy, so it's actually going to go up. So I'm going to go from 8 up to, which is going to get us to 10. And that's why the answer here is 10. This expression right here can be rewritten like this, because subtracting a negative amount is the same as just adding balloons, and it goes up. And then in your word problem, you can say, he removes two pounds. Where does the house end up? For this last one, it says three minus eight. That's just, we're subtracting positive numbers here. So I'm going to think about this as an elevator problem. So an elevator 
starts on the third floor. And I can model that by showing the foyer and the third floor. And then subtracting 8 just means the elevator goes down 8 floors. Where is it? So if I do that, I'm going to go 3 down to 0, just like we went down 3. We're breaking up that 8 into a 3 and then 5 more floors to go down. So I'm going to go down 5 more. And that's why the answer is negative 5. Which problems involved adding or subtracting weights? Well, if we look back at the beginning, this first problem did because we were adding a negative amount. We were adding weight. The second problem did not. The third problem did because we were subtracting a negative amount or subtracting weights. So you could say something like whenever you add a negative amount or subtract a negative amount. And just to give two examples of that, uh, we could do 5 plus negative 3. That's what it looks like to add a negative amount, which would go down. Um, and then subtracting a negative amount would look like this. In both of these, the top one is adding 3 pounds of weight, the bottom is subtracting 2 pounds of weight. Alright, so let's review using the open number line to solve some integer problems. So here we have 25 plus negative 40. Um, this is an adding weight problem. And it's like we're starting at 25 and then we're adding 40 pounds of weight. So really what we're going to do is we're going to go down 40 here. So to do that, um, you could go down by 10s, by 5s, however you want. I'm just going to use the go to a friendly number strategy. So I'm going to go down 25. Um, and then since I want to go down a total of 40, I have 15 left to go down, which would bring me to negative 15. And that's why the answer is negative 15. For G, we have negative 25 plus 32. This is a regular elevator problem because that second number is regular. So we're starting 25 floors in the basement, and since we're adding, we're going to go up. We're going to go up a total of 32 floors. So I'm going to go up to 0. And then out of 32, I've already gone 25. That means I have another 7 left to go. And we would end up 7 floors above ground. That's why the answer is 7. Most of the state test integer problems involve fractions or decimals, so you really got to be comfortable with this. Um, but it's the same idea as the first page. So here we have 4 fifths minus negative 15. Since we're subtracting a negative amount, this is like subtracting weight, which means that even though that's subtraction, this is actually going to go up. So we need to start above 0 at 4 fifths, and then we just need to go up one fifth, and four fifths plus one fifth, which is an equivalent expression for what this problem is asking, that would equal five fifths. And five fifths is equivalent to one whole. Alright, for h, before we start subtracting these, um, remember that with fractions you need to have the same unit, so the denominators need to be the same size. So um, 2 thirds, I notice that if I multiply 3 by 2, that would give me 6, which is what we want. So I'm going to take that negative 2 thirds and multiply it by 2 over 2. And that equals negative 4 over 6. And now I'm going to rewrite this problem. So negative 2 thirds becomes negative, two th negative 4 sixth minus 1 sixth. And now... I'm going to model this on an open number line. Zero is up here, and we're starting below zero. We're starting at negative four sixth. And then, since it's regular subtraction, it's like an elevator that's going down. 
and we're going to go down one sixth. And you just have to remember that when you're in the negatives and you go down, you're getting farther away from zero, so it actually will become negative five sixth. All right, same idea here. Um, this problem negative 4.2, that tells me that I'm starting below zero in the basement. So I'm going to do negative 4.2. And then we're adding 10.7. So I know we're going to go up 10 and 7 tenths. So that's more than 4.2. So first, let's just go up by that to get to zero. Then to figure out what we have left to go up, I could subtract this. And I see that we have 6.5 left to go up. So that would get us to 6 and 5 tenths, which is our answer. For a problem like L, where we have decimals and fractions, we have to just decide, do I want them both to be fractions or both to be decimals? Um, I'm going to go with decimals here. And I see 3 fourths. And I know that 3 fourths is equivalent to 75 out of 100. One, because it's three quarters, but two, because if I multiply it by 25 over 25, I get 75 over 100. And that, as a decimal, is 75 hundredths, which is like 75 cents. So I'm going to rewrite this problem as 0 0.4 plus, still a negative number, negative 75 hundredths. Um, right now, the 0.4, that's 4 tenths, and the negative 75, that's negative 75 hundredths. So I'm actually going to rewrite 4 tenths as 40 hundredths, which is equivalent. And that way it's going to be easier to keep track of this. So now it's just like any other integer problem, we have a starting point. Our starting point is 40 hundredths. And then adding normally means we're going up, but we're adding a weight. Um, so we're adding that negative, which means this is actually going to go down 75 hundredths. Since that's more than 40 hundredths, I know we're going to make it to zero. And we would have 35 hundredths left to go down. And so we're going to land at negative 35 hundredths. And so that's the answer. If you did this in fraction form, maybe your answer was negative 7 twentieths which is equivalent to negative 35 hundredths. All right, before I start J, I see that we're subtracting mixed numbers and the denominators aren't the same. So I'm going to take 1 half, and I see that 2 goes into 4 if I multiply it by 2. So let's just multiply 1 half by 2 over 2, which would give us 2 fourths. So this first mixed number becomes 4 and 2 fourths. And then I just bring down the minus 5 and 3 fourths. Um, you could solve this in decimal form if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave it in fraction form. So I have 4 and 2 fourths, and this is just like an elevator starting sort of on the fourth-ish floor, and it's going down a little bit more than 5 floors. So I know that that's going to make us go past 0. So let's go down... 4 and 2 fourths. And then if I think about that, I want to go down a total of this much, and I've already gone down this much. 5 minus 4 is a whole, and 3 fourths minus 2 fourths is 1 fourth. So that means what do I have left? I still have a whole and 1 fourth to go down. So the answer is negative 1 and 1 fourth. And the last one, again, we have fractions and decimals. Um, I'm going to rewrite this in decimal form. So let's do, let's start off with the negative two-fifths. So remember to turn a fraction into a decimal. You need to make the denominator into 10 or 100 or 1,000 or some um, multiple of, or power of 10. So I'm just going to multiply it by 2 because that would get me to tenths. And that's the same as negative 4 tenths. That's pretty good. And 
since I see up here that this is in the hundredths place, let's just rewrite this as negative 40 hundredths. So we have negative 55 hundredths. Let's keep track of everything. We have a minus sign, parentheses, negative 40 hundredths is what we just found. Okay, P looking pretty good. So now open number line, starting negative 55 hundredths, so that's like down here. And then we're subtracting a negative. And that's like subtracting weight from the house that makes the house lighter. So really, this problem is going up. It's like negative 55 hundredths plus 40 hundredths. So I notice that, that that's not actually going to get us to zero. We're going to be below zero. So let's go up that 40 hundredths. And since we're getting closer to zero, in a way it's like subtraction, we would be at negative 15 hundredths. And that's the final answer for that last problem. Guys, hopefully that's helpful. Remember, you got to do part two this week just this week so that you're ready for the state test. So I'll see you there.